Hello and welcome to this course on dynamic processing utilising Waves plugins. There is a lot to cover, so we'll be looking at a couple of volumes initially. Here in Volume 1, we'll start by using the C1 series of compressors that include the C1 compressor, the C1 compressor gate, the C1 gate on its own, and the C1 compressor sidechain. And in fact, if I open up the inserts here within Cubase for this vocal track, you can see that once I move over to the Waves folder and then open up the dynamic subfolder, well, you can see all the different varieties here for this C1 plugin. And not only that, you can see that we have a mono and a stereo version of each. And in my case here, because I'm using Cubase 7.5, I've got VST3 versions of them too. OK, simple enough. Now I'm going to insert the C1 compressor, this mono version. Of course, the vocal file is in mono. OK, and there it is, the C1 compressor user interface. Now I'm going to start by explaining this C1 interface so that we can get to grips with where things are and how its parameters relate to each other. Then as we progress, we'll move on to explore the more complex versions or instances of the plugin within the C1 series. So, as I say, I've got the C1 compressor open here within my DAW, Cubase, but of course you can use whichever DAW that you want to use. Alternatively, you can use these Waves plugins within an audio editor, such as Wavelab, SoundForge, Audition, or whichever audio editor that you prefer. Right then, let's have a look at what we have with this plugin. Horizontally across the top here, you can see that if you want to use a preset to get you started, then simply clicking on here, load, well this allows you to do just that. Now to be honest, as you can see, there aren't very many presets here. But of the four that there are, we can see by their names that we can use C1 as a compressor or an expander. And in fact, if you want to vacillate between a couple of different presets, you can AB simply by clicking on here to move over to a B setting, OK, fairly self-explanatory, so I'm just going to go back, click on Load once more, and then select the top option, Full Reset. Rather than using a preset, in this tutorial I want to talk you through what you can do manually so that we can see how all the different buttons and visual areas and sliders etc relate to each other. Incidentally, even though there is an instance of C1 that utilises the sidechain function, you can also do it here, simply by clicking on this button. We'll get back to that later as necessary. By the way, you might ask initially why there are a number of C1 plugins within the series. Well, I suppose the answer is so that you can choose to use a specific version, a specific instance, that requires you to do one processing job. So, rather than opening just one C1 plugin with all the available tools, gate and sidechain, etc., by opening a cutdown version, this C1 comp, for example, well, you get to run a specific processing task, but with less of a CPU hit than would have been necessary if there was only one fully featured version of the plugin. And no doubt you'll find this quite useful if you want to open up multiple versions of C1 across many different tracks, allowing your CPU hit to be that much lower. Now, in general, what we can say, this C1 comp version is a wideband compressor stroke expander and is therefore suited to be used as an insert as we have here. Or, if you want to, you can use it as a send if you want to use it for parallel compression, for example. Now, no doubt you will use it on your material as you see fit. But Wave suggests it's great for voice or instrument compression, individual track compressing, delicate soft knee mastering, uncompression by soft knee upward expansion and soft knee limiting. OK, so quite a number of different uses for a wide variety of different material. And you'll notice as we progress that the C1 plugin allows for high level compression, gentle high level expansion, or mid level compression that can be focused on any desired signal level. So that's a good description then and an explanation of what C1 is and what it can do for you. What we'll do now is we'll look at how it's set out. At the left here, we have a gain reduction meter that will show how much compression is taking place by moving vertically downwards in red below the 0 dB marker. 
For example, if this dipped to indicate in red by 6 dB, that's the amount of gain reduction momentarily occurring at that point within the audio playback. And you'll notice in a moment when I play the audio through this that this gain reduction meter displays a real-time visual for the compression stroke expansion processing. And no doubt you'll notice down here, below the meter, is a numerical field. And this indicates the infinite peak hold for the reduction or expansion. As the meter is moving, to reflect your audio signal, you can click anywhere on the meter display to reset this value. Now, as I said earlier, the C1 is a soft knee compressor stroke expander. Now, what is meant by this is the signal will be attenuated, if compression is used, by the amount indicated on the gain reduction meter once the signal goes above a threshold level that we set. If we set the threshold to trigger the compression once it rises above minus 6 dB, for example, 6 decibels below the optimum 0 dB level, then the compression will kick in by whatever compression ratio that we set. But because C1 is a soft knee compressor, it won't be immediately compressed. Instead, the compression will occur gradually, gently or softly, as it approaches the threshold level. Consequently, the compression sounds more soft and, of course, less abrupt. This type of compression is ideal for natural or transparent compression of your audio. OK, that's enough theory for the moment. What I'll do is I'll start playback, remembering that this C1 compressor is inserted on the vocal track, and what I'll do is I'll play around with some of the settings so that you can see and hear how this sounds. Do bear in mind also that the vocal is completely dry, as is the piano and the cello that you're about to hear. OK, so here's the piano. And what I'll do is I'll set the ratio here by double clicking in the ratio field and make this a 3 to 1 compression ratio. Right, here comes the vocal. Now this compression of 3 to 1 won't make any effect of course just at the moment until I determine the point at which I want the compression to kick in. I do it by dragging down this threshold slider here. And as soon as I do, you'll notice in the gain reduction meter that we see the amount of gain reduction being applied, indicated in red here, dipping below the optimum 0 dB. OK, so that's the very fundamentals of setting up C1. We would first of all determine a ratio, in our case it's 3 to 1, and then drag our threshold slider down so that we can pinpoint the audio place at which this compression of 3 to 1 starts to kick in. Now, in our example so far, this has been set to kick in at around minus 9 decibels, and of course we did it by using this slider. But we can also use the threshold field. Simply left click on the numerical value and drag down to set the threshold at a lower point, or, if you prefer, horizontally below the graphical view here, you can use this slider. Dragging to the left sets your threshold at a lower value, and you can see the visual representation of where it kicks in with that gentle rolling off soft knee compression type visually displayed here. OK, simple enough, but as I say, you can adjust the threshold in many different ways. Using this threshold slider, using the numerical field, or the horizontal slider under the visual display. Now, to be honest, I tend to use the compressor control level meter, this slider, because as long as you don't have C1 here set to bypass, then in practice what I do is I set the slider here at the top, initially at 0 dB, and then simply slide it down to best evaluate at what threshold level the signal gets to before compression occurs. Of course, that's not the whole story though. As you can see, we do have some other controls. Underneath ratio, we have attack. And this allows you to determine how quickly the compressor kicks in with those settings that we've set just above, how quickly it sets in the attack time, and we can set this in milliseconds. At the moment it's set to 2 milliseconds, but once more, left clicking on this field and dragging down means I can reduce my attack time so that the compressor kicks in much more immediately, consequently reducing the soft knee effect. As you can see, you can make this very quick or if you want it to be slower, drag it up to 1000 milliseconds. Now for our example at the moment, I'll make it 25 milliseconds. A quick way of doing it is double click in the field and just simply type in 25. 
Now connected to the attack time is the release time. Now this is also displayed in milliseconds and it indicates the time it takes for your compression or expansion to cease and then consequently the signal to return to its unaffected state. And as you can see, it ranges from 1 millisecond up to 10,000. Once more, if you want to double click in the field, you can input a setting manually. I'll take it to 25 milliseconds as well. Now, no doubt you'll have noticed right at the top of these available buttons, underneath where it says reference, we have the option here to flick between low level reference mode, which simulates the behavior of conventional compressors. Or, as we'll get to in a later tutorial, we can flick over to peak ref or peak level reference mode if you want to keep levels approximately the same. Now, in terms of a starting point, if you set the ratio to 0.5 to 1 up to 1 to 1, then effectively what you're going to do is produce high level expansion. We'll look further at expansion later. So, just before I finish up for this tutorial, I want you to notice this final button down here, PDR, Program Dependent Release. Well, this allows the release times to vary in reaction to the input signal. If you've got very transient material, like a snare for example, well higher settings here for this PDR field are better for short duration transient signals. If you are using C1 on a synth pad that has long sustained notes, well lower settings here are better for audio with sustaining chords. Now, as you'll probably know, a consequence of using compression as opposed to expansion is when you use compression, you are invariably reducing the level by the ratio set. If you are telling C1 here, in our example of the ratio set to 3 to 1, we are stipulating that any audio that crosses our threshold by 3 dB, well, we are asking C1 to actually make the output only 1 dB. So, of course, the consequence of this is the overall output is lower. And in fact, if you look at the output module over here, you'll see a reflection of this so far. When we played the vocal track through this, then you can see down here that the amount of gain reduction being applied is around about 5 dB. Therefore, what you can do is come back over to the makeup field here and input the same amount. Now, I tend not to, not exactly anyway. In this example here, where our output is dipping by 5 dB, I would probably tend to make the makeup maybe 3 dB or 4 dB. And I only do that owing to the fact that the attack time won't be clamping down on the audio immediately. I'll show you what I mean again in practice. I'll start playback once more, and rather than me talking all the way through, I'll adjust these fields as I feel necessary, so that I don't get distortion indicated by the red indicator light at the top of our output level. Okay, here we go. Remember the time you were mine and you promised always there. Cause I know that I do All our days turned to haze and vanished in the air I feel like we have to There isn't anything, baby That we can do Maybe we don't realize It's over now between me and you Reading the old letters that you sent only me It's so much harder to accept after all this time Of being only mine I feel my heart has been wrecked There isn't anything, baby, that we can Okay, so that's an introduction then to C1 Comp, this compressor stroke expander plugin. So what we'll do now is we'll progress further and continue our look at the C1 compressor.